I am Muntu Siyasta Nilay. So basically, I'm going to talk about the uh, history and evolution of the Bangla text and uh, the dialects. So here's my screen. Let me share. So my topic is history and evolution of the Bangla text and dialects. So uh, basically, our topic was we had to present something that happened before 1947 and how it traces back to the culture. So if we intend to uh, depict the picture of, uh, I mean, the flag of Bangladesh before 1947, then uh, this is how this, this would look. So this was basically the flag of British Raj, but uh, we can consider this as the flag of Bangladesh as well. Uh, although Bangladesh actually didn't exist at that time, but still, from a metaphorical sense, we can say that this is the flag. This was the flag of our uh, country as well. So uh, these were my objectives uh, uh, and attempt to reconcile that dispute regarding when England Bangla writing started and by trying to explicate how old exactly the Charya Pada are. And second, to understand the history of the Bangla text through comparative philology and then trying to understand the Bangla culture through dialects because we know that dialect is what reflects our culture. And then finally, trying to specify one classified version of major dialects. And then my research questions. Now, there can be numerous questions based on the contents. However, I have made it concise and formed two serious questions based on the topic with one additional question that can be raised as well on this topic, but I'm not going to include that because that would be like I am in a way, uh, you know, judging the ability of the scholars. So the first question, uh, did the beginning of pre-modern Bangla writing start around 7th century as Dr. Muhammad Shahidullah thinks or around 8th century as Rahul Shankariya thinks? or around 10th century as Haripasa Shastri thinks and he was the one, by the way, who first discovered this Charya Pada or around 10th or 12th century as Shunit Kumar Chatterjee thinks or around 11th and 14th century as Shukumar Shen thinks Now I know this can be, this is getting quite confusing but I would say this whole thing can be quite uh, contentious if we look at this and another question is, well, what one should Bengalis adapt Shunti Kumar Chatterjee's and Shukumar Sen's classified version with six major dialects or Dr. Mohammad Shahidullah's classified version with four major dialects and why? Now let's begin. Now if we intend to know the origin of the Bengali language, then it's assumed that what we are speaking today actually came from the Indo-European language family as uh, you can see on the left and this is the Bengali language so you can see that this Indo-European language is actually the common ancestor of all this language and Sir William Jones in 1786 first acknowledged us about the Indo-European language family in a lecture he attended in Calcutta and even by today Sir William Jones is credited behind the contribution of inventing the Indo-European language family. So without his formidable contribution maybe we will witness this prosperity of the Bengali language much on delay. So yes, a huge huge applause for him. Now this is uh, one of the, the language that came from the Indo-European uh, family tree. You can see the Dakaya Kuti, which is basically the language of the old Dhaka, Puran Dhaka, and they have their own dialects, which is kind of different than if you speak to a person that is living on Dhanmundi or Gulshan for a long, long time. But as you see, this Euro in the European family tree, this is still the common ancestor of this. And now many of us maybe are contemplating that uh, this language has survived. Uh, by default like all the other languages but that's not the case you know as you can see that 
uh, this language, Pradeshi language, it has the same identical common ancestor that we have. But unfortunately, as of 2018, only three people are speaking this and all of them are 60 plus. So unfortunately, with the demise, this language is going to get extinct. But lucky for us that Bengali has survived and we are going to see it for the foreseeable future. And now, this is the paradigm of the whole phenomenon. So you can see this is, like I said in the preceding section, that this is the our common ancestor in the European language. So from this came the Indo-Iranic language. And from this evolved this Indo-Aryan language. And from this came the Sanskrit language. Now this whole thing can be quite fuzzy for everyone. So I would ask you people to just stick with the Sanskrit. That would be sufficient. Because, you know, uh, Bangladesh actually, Bangladesh actually language, which is believed, is actually uh, uh, borrowed from the Sanskrit and the words known as uh, Tasama, uh, Tadbaba. So, uh, from the Sanskrit, you can see on the left side, that you can, even we can fragment Sanskrit in three pieces. One is Saroshani language, the Maharashtri, and the Magadhi. And from these three, Bengali came from the Magadhi, or you can call it the Ardha Magadhi Prabhupada or whatever. And from the Magadhi came the Bengali language in 650 AD. So this is uh, very small. We can see uh, the from the common ancestor to the contemporary form of the Bengali language. And in the preceding section, we saw that uh, it's assumed that what we're speaking today it actually came around 650 AD, but still back then the Bengal language it wasn't really identical the way we see today. Like you, like and and many of us are well acquainted with uh, the Charyapada, which in our Bengali grammar class we have learned them as Chorjapad. And the earliest example of old Bangla was found in the poem of the Charyapada and language of these poems is also related to the Eastern Magadhi languages. Like we talk in this section about Magadhi Prakrit. So basically there's a lot of disputes like I have mentioned about the age of the Charya brothers. But this is what our scholars could you know accumulate and deliver to us. So let's try, uh, make an attempt to read it if it's possible. See? So now, if we, if I try to try to read this normally in a, a class, I think I would tell everyone to read this if possible. Uh, so if I try to read this, I can say that it's something written like Trendu Poche Shondegi Pak John Modoy Potishnu Robindo or something like that. I mean, I can understand the letters to some extent, but still, it doesn't make a real sense, right? But this is how it has evolved from that point it has evolved to what we are witnessing today and this is another uh, instance of this whole phenomenon uh, let's try to read this so it's written like minoto ato to bayono pa shishe ponchomuke twini again like i said that to some extent, we can actually recognize the letters and try to read it, but still, it doesn't make sense. The only thing it makes sense is like the Shisha Ponchumuka, like top, fifth face, or something like that. So, and now, we are going to talk about the evolution of the Bangla text. Now, see, uh, when we look at this, this thing is quite fuzzy to us, right? I mean, it's like, what the hell is written there? But the thing is, what's actually written there is... Uh, in Bengali, we call this Eid. Yes, exactly. Uh, the first letter, this is actually Birgoy, and this one is Do, Eid. But the thing is, this was, uh, these letters, these are the common ancestors of the contemporary letters, what we use today to interact. And here we can see a triangle and then a cross from the Christian faith. But uh, today, this is actually egg. Yes, the triangle is a, and this cross from the Christian faith 
it's for egg. A loose look at another one. So here we can see uh, elf and then another I like a half of a uh, uh, circle, but uh, this is actually today we will say this wood. The first one is from show, and this one is top wood. And this, <laughs> this one, I think it's not about thing. I mean, all of us are quite acquainted with this. This is actually emoji we use every day, but uh, that was the common ancestor of the letter. Roshi, yes. So this is how the Roshi was, you know. And if I be honest, I think the ancestors, I, uh, their ancestors, I think it would have been much easier if we would learn writing on this way, you know. Because look at the cross and look at the core. It would have been much uh, easier to write the core uh, like this instead of writing like this. And this is just my own, you know, just a speculation. It can differ and it will definitely differ from person to person and another thing i would like to address to everyone i think it will be quite interesting which is and you can see on the above i have written that an overview of the evolution of the banga text from evolutionary biology the common ancestor now why i have uh, brought this because this is very much related to the same evolution we have witnessed which would, uh, we have with us or with our language. And we are going to know about this more ahead. Now, basically, evolution is, I think, most of us or many of us are acquainted with what evolution is basically is. It's simply uh, the mechanism through which different kinds of living organisms are believed to have evolved from the ancestor. Or you can say this like as a transmogrification of species. And you can see the Darwin's finches. But uh, this will make this thing uh, more evident. So see, uh, basically in evolution, we can uh, we can break this down into uh, vitally two parts. Which one is the microevolution, and I have provided a very, very easy definition so that everyone can understand it. So microevolution is the small scale changes in gene frequencies. You can just remember like this as changes happen on a small scale. Now, why I'm talking about this? Because look at this letter, Taw. This is the contemporary letter, but how it was in the beginning, this, you can see this and this. So for us, this is the common ancestor. And you know that in microevolution, like I've mentioned, that the change happened on a small scale. So from this common ancestor, we can see a change on the second phase, on the third phase, in the fourth phase, and the fifth phase. And we can see a small scale change. We can trace it back to its original form. I mean, there are some similarities, right? So this is what the microevolution. And we can see today in the gray wolf, as is the common ancestor of all the pups we see around, or all the dogs. This is what according to the scientists, and not just this, uh, Charles Darwin, but I don't know so many, you know, uh, modern scientists who actually agree to this. And I think uh, uh, many of us have learned about this in our biology classes, and we know for sure that it's an axiom. So this is the microevolution. I hope it's understandable to everyone. See, in microevolution, we don't uh, see not a uh, total revamped substance, like we can see that the letter talk that there are some changes, but still, uh, it's not on a large scale, there are still some similarities. However, there's another thing, the macroevolution. And the macroevolution is the large scale changes in gene frequencies. But you can just remember it like this, that the changes that happen on a large scale, like are bringing something totally new, bringing something distinct, like we can talk about the uh, dinosaurs, that how our dinosaurs have evolved into the modern diverse economic scientists. So you can see the letter toy again, and this is as the common ancestor, like I have mentioned in the preceding section. And here you, you can see the again that the microevolution is still this part. However, if you look at this from this part, this is the macroevolution because. 
in this part we can you can see something uh, like a V on its uh, reverse form, but on this you can see a totally new thing. So this is called the macro evolution, the bring, bringing something totally new. And we can compare this with uh, the modern apes. Apes is basically the scientific name of the birds. But what's most salient is see the how uh, it evolved from the dinosaurs. So we can precisely say that the contemporary scientific consensus affirms that birds are a group of many raptoron therapod dinosaurs that emerged during the Mesogenic era. And this is, we can see that it's very much relatable with the evolution of the Bengali text. And I think I've made this thing quite evident. If not, then definitely you can ask me about this. And this is the another paradigm of the whole phenomena. You can see that uh, this reverse K is the common ancestor of the word Shoryo. And this is how it has evolved, you know? And all the letters, sometimes we see the micro evolution and sometimes we see the macro evolution but eventually what we are uh, using today is all actually you know the macro evolution which is the large changes what it was in its and compared compared to what it was in its ancient form and you can see look at this i like i thought about this christian faith of cross and this is the core uh, and then this so many. And so the next part of the presentation is about what reflects the culture. So I have brought this topic of dialect is dialect is what reflects our culture. Now, according to Shuniti Kumar Chatterjee and Shukumar Sen, they have classified the Bangla dialects in six classes by their phonology and pronunciation. They are the Rahi dialect, the Bangali dialect, the Varendu dialect, the Manbhumi dialect, the Rajpanshi dialect, and Sundarbani dialect, the six dialects. And we have our Dr. Mohan Shaidullah. Oh, let me tell, tell you one thing about him that he basically earned his PhD degree from Sharabana University in 1928 for his research on the dialects of Charyapada. And he was the first Muslim to uh, receive this doctorate degree. Now, why I'm talking about him? Because one of the reasons is he has a PhD on this issue and according to him, he said that there should be four classified versions of dialect, which are North Bangladesh dialects that includes those of Dinaspur, Ratshay, Bogura, Pabna, and I live in Ponchagar, so it, it should include this too, and then the Rajpanshi dialect of Rangpur. And East Bengali dialect, which includes uh, Dhaka, Maiman Singh, Tripura, Parishal, Silet, as well as Faridpur, Joshur, Kulna. And then South Bengali dialect, which include those of Chittagong and Noakhalit dialect. And the Chittagong hinterlands, such as those spoken by the Chakmas and Murums. I think many of us are well acquainted that they kind of speak in a different manner. Even the people from Silet, they have their own dialect and language, which is not actually Bangla and it's, it's not actually understandable for us, right? And the Varendar come Kampuri spanning from Golpada and Purnia. And now uh, Dr. Mumas Shaidullah, you know, when, when he was classified by the dialects, uh, he highly relied on Mr. Abraham's work when he classified them. And George Abraham Grierson, he was he, he conducted the first uh, linguistic survey of India, which was from 1903 to 1928, and it was the first serious work on the regional front of Bengali language. Now, see, now if someone asks me that uh, which one I prefer, the classical version of six or the dialects of four. I think I would rather, I mean, first I was telling me that, I to tell you that it might differ, right? But from my speculation, uh, I would go with the, this one, with Dr. Moshwedullah, because one of the reasons is he had a PhD on this issue. And then if you see the Wikipedia, uh, the Bangladesh, uh, they have also adapted his work because he was uh, from our own country. So I think I would go with him. But again, like I said, that it can very much differ and you can or anyone can have their own choices and 
I have nothing against it. And then uh, it's needless to say about Sir William Carey and his formidable contribution. Because see, we, if you know that he, he, his book on Bengali grammar, which was done in year 801, and Ram Komal, who acquired his knowledge from the work of Sir William Carey, and Ram Komal, in 1934, he published the first modern dictionary of the English and Bangla language, which prompted the rapid thriving of the Bengali literature. So we can see that without Ram Komal's contribution, which was possible only because of Sir William Carey's formidable contribution, maybe we would witness the prosperity of Bengali language much on delay. So yes, again, a huge round of applause for him, for what he has done for our country. And he is one of the Orientalists that Bengali should, you know, uh, give their enormous respect. And the variance in dialects, uh, like, let you also understand this, uh, the phenomenon of the dialect from the different types of, you know, like the Bhasha, like the Shadu Bhasha, such as uh, India's national anthem, like the Janaganamana by Rajana Tagore, on the Bandre Matram by Banki Chandra Chattopadhyay were composed in Shadu Bhasha. So those two, we can see the, the how Shadu Bhasha was prevalent in their work. And then comes Chicholti Bhasha. And we see in the works of Pierre Chandra Mitra like Alep or Tula. So these are the difference between the Shadu Bhasha and the Cholito Bhasha. And finally, I am going to give you a paradigm uh, which will make this whole thing uh, more evident. Now see, let, let's look at this dialect. Like, if someone says that Ami Now see, I'm going to talk about our local dialect Ponchogor and Ponchogor, someone will say that Mui Oi Changra Ta Ke Uthe Jawa Dekhinu or Mui Bau. Changra is also called as Bau. Changra or Bau. And then example two is like, suppose someone says Koi Jatcho. In Bogura, someone says that Kuki Jatchu. In Jaipur, someone says Kuki Jatchu. In Purandaka, someone says Kui Jau. In Panchagar, someone says Kunthe Jasish. Not Jatish, but it's exactly Jasish. So this is how the dialect is. See, as you can see, the Kui Jatchu, but this very same thing in different manner. Another instance is like the Chele and or uh, Me in Panchagar language. It's like the word Chele. It is, it is called uh, Chengra, or Chengra or Bau. And the May is called Chengri or Main. Like uh, someone said, I may go to the In uh, Poncho, someone said, Kika Mai, go Something like this. And then the last one, another example, is by in Bangladesh Shadu Koshi. It would be Ek Dekki Dutti Putro Chilo. This is the Shadu Koshi. But in Northly, someone say Ek Gaman She Duga Hut or Hola Silo. And Chitana, someone say Ugaman She Duga Fuasil. In Molly Brother, someone say Ek Better Duta Duga Fuasil. In Kulna, Ek John Manchi Duga Fuasil. In Jashur, someone say Ek John Duga Fuasil. In Panchagars, uh, where I live, someone say Ek Khan Manchi Duga Khan Chuachil or Bauchil or something like this. So I think uh, the whole dialect thing has been quite clear to everyone. And finally, I would like to talk about another thing, which is about the age of the Charya Padas. Now, see, we can see that there is a huge dispute uh, about the age of the Charya Padas. And like I uh, said about dialect, that people will have their own, you know, opinion and conjecture. So, uh, about the age of the Charya Padas, again, you know, I would just go with Dr. Mushaidullah's. You know opinion uh, because uh, again he, he has not actually based on this issue but like I said in the preceding section that he is a Bengali and that's why the Banglapedia is hard relying on his work I mean they adapted to his work so to me he's much more prominent but but this doesn't mean I'm anyway you know kind of uh, derogating the other scholars not at all I respect them as well. And mostly uh, the Orientalists like Sir William Jones and William Carey, what they have contributed 
to us and here you can see finally another thing like this is one of our big brothers of Panchabar after our uh, young team won the World Cup he shared that Panchabar is the first Vishwa Cup trophy what he is saying that uh, the World Cup trophy is in the hand of a kid of Panchabar so that was all my presentation I hope it was insightful to everyone and I hope it was a quite intriguing experience for everyone. Thanks.